Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to uh, keep going with our videos here. We're continuing to learn about motors. In this particular video, we're going to learn about the wound rotor motor. This is, you know, still part of Unit 5 Handout 12. Um, now, the reason we're going to learn about wound rotor motors is, well, the problem, guys, the problem with uh, three phase induction motors is and always has been that it's kind of difficult to control the speed. Um, as you are aware, the speed of a three phase induction motor is determined by the frequency that you connect it to. And that's because that frequency is going to, you know, establish the sync speed of the motor and the rotor speed is going to be slightly less than the sync speed because it's going to slip. And so without being able to change the frequency, you really kind of are stuck with, you know, whatever speed the motor is designed to run at based on how many poles it has. Now, you know, maybe you could reduce the voltage to a three phase induction motor and maybe that would slow the thing down. But the reality is that does not slow the thing down. It reduces the strength of the magnetic field. You know, it's still going to rotate at the sync speed no matter what, you know, voltage you apply to the thing. And so, you know, you could hope that maybe it's going to slip a bunch, but the problem is AC motors can't slip much because if they do slip, the rotor, which is made up of aluminum bars for the wind, you know, the winding in there has very little resistance. And so any amount of slip that you do will cause a large, large amount of induced voltage in those bars. And because they're, you know, really low resistance bars, the voltage induced in those bars is going to cause a large amount of current if there's a bunch of slipping going on, okay? And then, as you know, if you have a large amount of rotor current, you're going to have a large amount of stator current. And so before the advent of the VFD, which is the variable frequency drive, there was no real practical way to allow a induction motor to, to uh, run slowly and so uh, or have variable speed. And so, uh, you know, if you wanted a variable speed motor back in the day, guys, you basically were, you had to go with a DC motor. You know, a DC motor is easy to vary the speed. You just lower the armature voltage and it'll run slower. And you can overspeed it as well. Uh, this isn't about DC motors, though. Okay, so if you wanted an AC motor with variable speed, you basically only had one choice, and that is a wound rotor motor. Now, nowadays, you know, wound rotor motors are more or less obsolete because... We have VFDs now, right? But VFDs didn't really come around till the 1980s or so, guys, because we didn't have that, you know, technical t technology to, you know, take the AC in and rectify it and then chop it up into a new frequency, which is what a VFD does. So they had wound rotor motors. And we're going to learn them about them because there are a lot of them out there still, even though they're, you know, not really something that's going to be, uh, so, something you're going to find on a brand new piece of equipment. When I was in trade school, guys, you know, my teacher taught us about wound rotor motors. And I said to myself, listen, I'm never going to see one of these things, right? And so I didn't really pay attention. But right after I finished trade school, I got a job in a factory. And there were cranes, overhead cranes in that factory. And there were wound rotor motors everywhere in there and I had to fix them and figure out what was going wrong with them and I learned a few things about them while I was there one thing I learned about them is they're a pain in the ass okay they're high maintenance okay and uh, we'll talk about the wound rotor motor then we'll talk about why it is able to slip a lot which is basically what it does by the way in order to uh, reduce the speed you're going to just get it to slip a lot and also some troubleshooting if you ever encounter one, you know, what to expect or what to look at if you have this scenario or that scenario. And it won't be long. We'll, we'll uh, take care of it. And so in our little handout here, it shows, you know, kind of some pictures of the wound rotor motor. And uh, the first thing you need to know about it is it's got the same stator winding that every other induction motor has, okay? It's going to run at sync speed. 
you know, depending on the frequency and the number of poles. And so all that is exactly the same as any other induction motor. The difference is in how the rotor is made. And so the rotor, instead of just a big chunk of steel with aluminum bars in it, it's going to actually have a wound a copper winding on it, okay? And that's why it's called a wound rotor motor because when you look in it, you will see that there is a winding on the actual rotor. And that winding is going to come out to a bunch of slip rings here. And so you can see it, you know, here's the picture of the rotor, but here's kind of how it electrically works. There's kind of a three-phase winding in there, and that three-phase winding comes out to slip rings. And then those slip rings are, you know, have brushes that rub on them and they are connected to an external resistor bank. And so here you can see that. And so if you're ever in a factory and you're looking at a wound rotor motor, you will notice that right next to it or nearby. There is a giant and terribly ugly looking and horrible, you know, resistor bank there. Now the way this thing works, guys, is <clears throat> Um, this thing is going to get started up. It's going to have a sync speed of however many poles it has. Okay, if it's a two pole, it's going to have a sync speed of 3600. If it's a four pole, it's going to have a sync speed of 1800. But, you know, because there's this external resistor bank here connected to the rotor, you can actually vary the resistance of the rotor. And so you can actually allow this thing to slip a lot and still have limited rotor current because you've added a bunch of resistance to the, you know, to the rotor circuit externally. And so let's say this thing had a bunch of resistance, you know, dialed in out here. This thing here would run and it would be slipping like crazy and there would be tons of flux crossing those, that winding there. But that tons of flux would be inducing, you know, a tons of voltage into it. But the voltage, the current would be limited by the fact that you have a whole bunch of resistance in the rotor circuit. Okay. And so, like I said, with a regular induction motor, it can't slip much because any you know, amount of slipping causes a giant amount of current. This thing, it can slip like crazy because the rotor current's going to be limited potentially by the external resistance that's connected to it. Okay. Now, the way this thing would work is if you dialed all the resistance out of this external resistor bank, then this thing would run basically exactly like a regular three-phase induction motor. It would have a very low resistance winding. It would not tolerate any slipping or very little slipping. It would run at 1750 RPM if it was a four-pole motor, you know, with 50 RPM of slip. Um, but as it's running, you could dial in a bunch of resistance into the rotor circuit. That will cause it to start to slip and the current will be limited by the fact that you've added that resistance in there. And you can typically get this thing to run. It says in the book here, guys, you know, and this is information that I got, you know, from textbooks and different things like that, that you can get it to slip by as much as 50%. I think that's still pretty high. I think in real life, you can probably get it to slip even more than that. No problem at all. Um, you know, just keep adding resistance to the uh, rotor circuit and it slips more and more and more. And in the factor that I worked at, I mean, this show, it shows this is kind of a variable resistor guys, but in the factory that I worked at, they weren't variable resistors. It was resistor banks and contactors that would add or subtract resistances in steps. And so the operator of the crane, he'd be driving this thing down the building and he would kind of have five speeds with a joystick, you know, and he'd go click, 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 and he'd click through one speed at a time until he was at full speed and then uh, same with going reverse okay so he basically had you know it was adding or subtracting resistances in big chunks by using contractor contactors okay so it says here the use is used for large motors where large starting current is undesirable uh maybe in the olden days okay but um not typically i don't think um there's other ways to reduce start current, right? You could use a soft start and things like that. Uh, used in applications where speed control is desirable while maintaining maximum torque. And that's really what um, the wound rotor motor was designed for. 
It was for speed control of an AC motor, okay, without, you know, without having to change the frequency. Okay, guys? Now, real quick here, we're going to talk about wound rotor motors a little bit. So, A, that you will recognize it. So, you will recognize a wound rotor motor because it will be a three-phase motor that has a wound rotor, okay? And it will have three slip rings. And those slip rings will be connected to brushes that go out to a giant and ugly resistor bank, okay? So that's how you know it's a wound rotor motor, guys. It's because of the resistor bank and the slip rings and the fact that you can look in there and see that it's got windings. Now, how is this thing going to behave? Well, there's a few things, guys, for troubleshooting that you can kind of make some educated guesses about what's going on with these things. And typically... There's a couple of things that happen with wound rotor motors that cause them to, you know, fail or not behave the way they're supposed to. The first thing that happens is the rotor actually, because it's a copper winding, it gets shorted out. Okay. And unlike other motors, which would like blow fuses, if you had a winding that was shorted, this thing will run perfectly with a shorted rotor. Because if you had a shorted rotor, this thing would behave just like any other squirrel cage motor, which also has a shorted rotor, right? If you have the aluminum bars, in your wound row, in your um, three phase induction motor, then that is a shorted, you know, rotor, and it only runs at one speed. It runs at sync speed minus the slip, right, based on the frequency. So if you encounter a wound rotor motor that only runs at wide open, okay, that's almost always because the rotor has shorted out, and it'll con it'll just run perfectly except for the guy won't have any ability to control the speed. It'll run wide open only. Okay, so good thing to know if you're ever in a situation where you're troubleshooting one of these things, a wound rotor motor that doesn't have speed control, usually a, a shorted rotor. Okay, now there's another thing that happens with these things, and that is that they have an open rotor. So again, it's a winding, and so that winding can open up in the rotor. And the other thing that can happen is it can actually open up in the actual external resistor bank. You know, you get wires falling off and stuff like that. If this thing is on a crane, then this external bank is external resistor bank is also mounted on the crane. Okay, and it's rolling up and down the building and things like that, vibrating, shaking, and you can have connection problems and other things going on, or you can have a problem at the slip rings where they're no longer, you know, they're worn out, no longer connected. Anything that causes the winding to become open will cause this machine to not run at all, okay? Because if you have an open rotor, guys, you're not going to have any current in the rotor. And if you have no current in the rotor, you have no magnetic field in the rotor that's going to try to follow the sync speed, okay, guys? So real quick, the video is getting a bit long, okay? Shorted rotor will cause it to run wide open only. Open rotor will cause it not to run at all. It'll sound like it's running. Okay, you'll hear the kind of the magnetic noise of the uh, of the stator rotating magnetic field humming sound. Okay, but the thing won't turn. Okay, so if you hear it humming, doesn't seem to want to turn. But but meanwhile, you know the motor's free and you can spin it by hand easily. Then it's probably an open rotor. Okay, guys, and these things are high maintenance because of the brushes. Anything that has brushes is a pain in the butt. Right, guys? So, wound rotor motor. Guys, there's a handout that goes along with the wound rotor motor. Let's see if we can find it here. Okay. It is unit five. Whoops. Unit five, handout four. Okay. Wound rotor motors. Bunch of multiple choice questions for you to do for homework. Have a great day, guys.